Today we're going to be talking about Shirin the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate. We'll be passing the torch on from the Vita version to the Nintendo Switch and Steam. We'll be talking about what is new in this updated version of the game that is coming out soon. We'll be talking about pricing, the price history of this game, and what it'll cost now. We'll be talking about Limited Run handling the physical edition of the Nintendo Switch version and what that means for you. We'll be talking about this game. What are my thoughts on it? Is it worth picking up this new version? And finally, we'll be talking a little bit about the history of the game. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here we are, another Vita game making its way to a platform where it'll be fully appreciated, as is the case with so many great Vita games before it. Let's all pause for a moment of silence in appreciation of the handheld that could have been if it weren't defeated by the rise in microtransaction riddled phone app games in 2012. So you are probably wondering what is new in the upcoming Switch and Steam versions? Well, we've got three new dungeons to explore. Each of these bonus dungeons will have their own unique elements to change up the gameplay. For example, Bladeless Wasteland is a dungeon without weapon drops and weakened physical attacks. So you'll need to rely on items and ranged attacks. The Cloister of Certain Doom is a dungeon that will have a turn limit. You'll need to clear the dungeon in a certain number of moves or you'll be sent back to town. The Garden of Destiny dungeon will reward you for quickly defeating monsters. You get more experience the fewer attacks it takes you to defeat them. Other new features include Music Collection, which lets you change the music in any area of the game. Live display mode, which is awesome, especially if you are streaming the game. It shows your stats, items, and game all on the same screen, which is also great if you have a large display to play on. And the Wanderer Rescue mode has been updated as well, but I'm not sure the details on what's been updated there yet. Now the Wanderer Rescue system on the Vita basically let you rescue and request to be rescued by other adventurers when someone falls in battle and doesn't want to lose everything. Unfortunately, the online functionality for that on the Vita version was shut down in December of 2019, a little over three years after the game's release. So hopefully the new Steam and Switch versions don't suffer a similar swift fate. And gosh, it sure would have been nice if they could have just supported the Vita version again on the servers that are back up and running but I'm sure there's probably some technical reason why that wouldn't be possible now. But that's pretty much it for new content. I really do like the new live display mode. I think this will be a fun game for streamers to play, especially with the random roguelike elements of gameplay. Okay, so a bit about the pricing here. First of all, the MSRP for digital is going to be 20 US dollars. Limited Run Games is going to be handling the new physical release for this in North America. At the time of this video, the price for that version has yet to be announced. On the PlayStation Vita, the physical version was originally 40 US dollars for the standard release and 80 US dollars for the collector's edition. But since that inventory was managed by standard retail outlets, that price would fluctuate a lot. For example, on Amazon, back then they were still doing 20% off new game purchases for Prime members, which was a huge savings. That was to match an offer that Best Buy was doing at the time, which was very similar. Aside from that, the lowest price you could buy a brand new copy was in 2019, $11 for the Standard Edition and $20 for the Collector's Edition. And Amazon Prime members would get free shipping too, which was a great deal for brand new sealed copies. However, with Limited Run managing the physical editions, you most likely won't see a price reduction over time here, unless they end up going to other retailers like Best Buy, but Limited Run usually just charges what they need to charge and don't have any problem sitting on additional copies if need be. Anyway, 
just some things to think about. I find this stuff interesting. So yeah, congratulations to those of you in Vita land that got cheap physical copies of Shirin. I do like the digital price on this new release though, pretty reasonable. All right, so what is this game? What is it all about? Well, Shirin the Wanderer is a roguelike. You'll be exploring randomly generated dungeons, or I guess in this case, a tower. As you progress, you'll gain experience and level up. But when you fail or return to town with an escape scroll, your character level resets back to one. Fortunately, if you escape using a scroll, you will get to keep all of your items and money. These things can be banked for safekeeping and you can tag your favorites so that they don't ever get lost forever when you die. There's always a chance you might pick those back up again. But the goal here is to see how far you can make it with what little you have. When you return to the beginning, you'll bring with you the knowledge you've gained. Not just what you yourself has learned, but also information you gained by identifying objects, learning new abilities, and other smaller progressions. Sometimes just unlocking new shops or features within the game for next time. I think when I first started playing this game, I wasn't really familiar with the roguelike genre. So I was really put off by it at first. You really just need to get into a different mindset about it though. This is actually one of my favorite genres now. Don't focus on the loss of experience or levels. Focus on gaining permanent abilities and upgrades. The character level reset is what keeps the game mechanics fun for a long time. And it's that slow build of the meta progression that is so satisfying and realizing how much better you're getting at the game over time. A lot of what makes this game challenging is just the sheer number of things to learn. And it's in learning how to deal with each obstacle in the game that makes you better at it. My advice is try not to get overwhelmed. There's a beginner training area with tons of tutorials. Just do a few at a time, play the game a bit and come back for more tutorials later. Take your time to take it all in. I've heard of people sinking over a thousand hours into this game. There's a ton of gameplay here. Meta progression in this game is moderate. It's not super fast, but it's been faster than most other roguelike games I've played recently. Once you get into the hang of protecting your gear from loss, you can upgrade your weapons and armor between each additional journey. Anyway, it's a great game, a bit of a long grind, but something you can come back to at any time. I think it's a great game to stream too, especially with the new live display user interface. Personally, I'm gonna be working on playing my PlayStation Vita copy just because I wanna to try to get all of those trophies someday, but I might be tempted to pick up this new version too for the additional features. Now, a lot of us in the West probably didn't know that Shirin actually started out on the Super Famicom back in 1995. And since then, we've seen these games appear on the Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, PSP, Nintendo Wii, PlayStation Vita, and now the Nintendo Switch and Steam, with many of the early games only seeing a release in Japan. However, there are many other games that have used the roguelike Mystery Dungeon formula that maybe you are more familiar with. Things like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Toneko's Great Adventure, One Way Heroics, Etrian Mystery Dungeon, Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, and so many more. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Shirin the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate. Again, this game will be releasing on December 2nd for 20 US dollars on the Nintendo Switch and Steam. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.